Back in section 3.2, we learned about measures of dispersion, i.e. spread. So we learned about the range, which is the difference between the highest and the lowest values. And then we also learned the most important ones, which are the variance and standard deviation. So there's population and sample versions of each, but they measure, in general, the spread of data points from the mean. So the problem with all of these is that they're not resistant to outliers. So when you have data points that are far away from the rest, it's going to cause all sorts of problems for all three of these measures of spread. The range especially, I mean, will be completely out of whack because of whatever the largest and smallest values are. And the variance and the standard deviation are not much better. They also get pulled um, to be larger than they probably should be if there's some very large outliers, large points or one data point that's really far out there, either to the right or to the left, to the high or to the low. So we need some better measures of spread that are more resistant, and we are about to have one. And it's called the IQR, the interquartile range. It's a range just like the range is, but it's not the range between the max and the min, it's the range between the quartiles, namely the first quartile and the third quartile, is the difference between Q3 and Q1. When you find this, what you're finding is the range of the middle 50% of the data set of observations because Q3 is the 75th percentile and Q1 is the 25th percentile, then approximately 50% of the data lies between those two values. So when you find the range, you're finding out how spread out those that 50%, middle 50% of your data set is. Now that IQR is resistant to outliers because it's built from quartiles and the quartiles are resistant just like the median is resistant to outliers. That means that the IQR is the best measure of spread for skewed data. All right, so let's look at this real quickly in a summary report. If the shape of your distribution is symmetric, then your best measure of central tendency is the mean and the best measure of dispersion is your standard deviation or your variance depending on what you're trying to do. If the shape of your distribution is skewed left or skewed right, then you're better off with the median because the median is resistant to that skewing. And then you're better off with the IQR, the interquartile range, because it also is resistant. Throughout the course, we're going to state several times in the notes and in the exams and in the worksheets and projects that you are to describe the distribution. What that means is that you want to discuss its shape, its center, and its spread. So shape meaning is it skewed left, skewed right, symmetric. What's its center, right? Where's its mean or its median, depending on which is the better measure. And its spread, either use standard deviation if it's symmetric or the interquartile range if it's not symmetric. Now to find the IQR, it's really very simple because it's Q3 minus Q1. And since the calculator finds Q3 and Q1, you're all set up. So let's do it here. So I'm going to go to stat, number one for edit. And you can see I have those test scores still in there, so I don't have to do anything there. So stat, calculate, number one. My list is L1. I want my frequency list blank because this is not a frequency distribution that I'm working with here. I'm going to go to calculate and press enter. Now down at the bottom, you can see there's Q1 and there's Q3, and there's the min and there's the max. So the min and the max you can use to help find your range. So you take 93 minus 54. Then for the IQR, you take 88.5 and minus 76. So the IQR would be, oops, and I already found the range here. So it'll be Q3 minus Q1. So that's 88.5, take away 76, I want to make sure of that number, 76, which is 12.5. And there we go. All right, now the mean we already saw from earlier, but for our own benefit, that would be x bar, because it was said it was from a sample of student test scores. And that was up near the top, or up at the top, I should say, 80.897. Okay. And then we need the standard deviation. That's S, because again, this is a sample, so we should go with the sample standard deviation, which in this case was 10.598.
And then the variance, again, I'll use the lots of decimal places method. So I'm going to take variables, pick number five, which is statistics, and then pick number three, which is SX. I'm going to square it, enter. It gives me 112.31. that's s squared, that's 112.31. There we go, just a little review there. All right, so we're going to describe the distribution of this data set. So let's see here. The mean is 80.897, the median's 84. So eh, it's pretty skewed, it's, it, it's pretty close to symmetric, it's a little bit skewed left, I would say. Actually, thinking about it more, I think it's, it, I think it's definitely skewed left because, all right, so let's write that out. So we want the shape, oops, hold on, that's going to show up green. There we go. So skewed left because the mean is significantly less than the median. The median, if you recall, is 84, it's right here. Okay, so that would be the best measure of center to use, it would be the median. Median is 84 is best to use because it's skewed. You're better off using something that's resistant to the skewing. And then the spread is the IQR, 12.5. So the middle 50% of data are spread out, um, are separated only by 12.5, separated. Only by 12.5 percentage points, right? So everything's pretty tightly packed in there for the middle, right? Being only 12.5 apart, that means the majority of students are only in the range around 84, right? That's only about 12.5 wide, so it's not very wide at all. All right, I'm done with that. Now let's look into how to check a data set for outliers. Since we discussed them even earlier, what the heck are they? Well, outliers are values that differ greatly from the other values in a data set. So they're far out away from the data sets, either to the low end or the high end. And there's a four step process for determining outliers. Step one, you find your Q1 and your Q3. And step two, you find your IQR. Step three, you find your lower fence and your upper fence. These are the boundaries for what's going to be unusual for you. So anything past these boundaries is weird. And then step four, you figure out whether anything is past those boundaries, and that's considered now an outlier. All right, so let's look at the same data set we've been looking at. We've already found Q1. Q1 was 76. Q3 was 88.5. Then we've already found the IQR. IQR is, oops, I apparently didn't do that in that form. IQR is 88.5 take away 76, which is 12.5. Done with that step. Step three, we need to find our lower fence and our upper fence. Okay, so the lower fence. Lower fence is, oh, here, let me type this in one second. There we go. Okay, the lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So that'd be 76 minus 1.5 times 12.5, which let's go find what that is. 76 minus 1.5 times 12.5 will be 57.25. So that'd be equal to 57.25. That's the lower fence right there. Then on the upper side, we have Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. So that would be equal to 88.5 plus 1.5 times 12.5, which would be 88.5 plus 1.5 times 12.5, 107.25. All right, so there's our upper fence. Now, if anything is lower than the lower fence or greater than the upper fence, it's an outlier. So if we look back at our data set, there's nothing that's above that upper fence. I mean, these are exam scores. Nothing's going to be at 107.25%. And indeed, nothing is. 
Okay. But let's look at the low end for a second. We have 57.25. That means both of these values right here are outliers, right? Because they are below that lower fence. So both 54 and 56 are outliers because they are lower than the lower fence. And that is the official way to find for outliers. All right, let's do this last problem together and then we'll be done with this section. So again, we have the US exports to different countries and we don't actually see all the countries. And this time we have mini tab output, slightly different computer program to give us this output. So we're supposed to compute the following, the IQR, the lower fence, the upper fence, and the range. Okay, so the IQR is Q3 minus Q1, and you can see right here Q3 is 26.6, Q1 is 10.3, take 26.6 minus 10.3 and you get 16.3. And while we're on the subject, let's do the range over here because that's pretty easy. That's the max minus the min, which is 160.8, take away 4.8, which is 156. I think we found that already in an earlier video, but that's okay. So there they are. Now the upper fence and the lower fence. The lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So the Q1 was 10.3, right there, 10.3. And then you take away 1.5 times 16.3. So when I do it with the calculator, 10.3 minus 1.5 times 16.3 makes negative 14.15. Okay, oops, I better make that another. There we go. All right, now for the upper fence, it's the same idea except it's plus 1.5 IQR. So that would be Q3 or 26.6 plus 1.5 times 16.3. So that's 26.6 plus 1.5 times 16.3. Or if you like, you can use parentheses, either one. And it's 51.05. Oops, let me align this real quickly. All right, they were all set. Now, how can you tell from the given information that there must be outliers in this data set? Well, there's no outlier on the low side because nothing's going to be lower than negative 14. This was a ratio data set, right? It's impossible to have negative numbers of in or negative billions of dollars of imports or exports. This is exports. But we could have an outlier on the high side, and we do. We can see right away that Canada is our maximum, which is 160.8, which makes sense. We share a very large border with them. And so therefore, they're an outlier, right? So Canada, let's see, the maximum, which we happen to know is Canada, it might not always be given to us in the data set information, is above the upper fence. Now describe the distribution. This is definitely skewed right. Um, you can tell it from a variety of reasons, one of which is that the mean is much larger than the median. For another thing, the lower fence is negative, which is usually a sign, right, that this is skewed right. All right, so we learned back earlier in section 3.1 that the mean is greater than the median means it's skewed right. Also, the fact that the lower fence is negative, even though this data set is at a ratio level, you can't have negative exports, but our lower fence is negative. That's usually a sign. Also, if you look at the distance between Q3 and your maximum, see how huge a distance that would be? It's like 140 wide. That's very large. It means that there's a very long tail on that right-hand side. All right, last but not least, we need to find the Z-score for Mexico. So Mexico is at $97,500,000,000. So we need to convert that to billion dollars because that's the unit we have up here. So that's $97.5 then the z-score would be x minus x bar, which is 97.5 minus 29.64 over s. But the data set didn't give us s. They gave us variance, which is 1458.4. But remember, the variance is standard deviation squared. So I just need to do this calculation right here. So let me grab the calculator, alpha f1, and then let me pick number 1, and let me type these values in one second. So I've got that numerator typed in. Down here, I want to hit second x squared to get that square root, 1458.4, enter. Oops, I typed that wrong. Let me do that again. There it is. And then I press enter. And I get 1.7769. This means that the U.S. exports a lot to Mexico because it's a high number, but not an unusual amount because it's not more than two.